Hello, art stewards! This is Alyssa Kindy, and we are going to jump right in and have a live demo video. We did one of these before sometime last year. I think it was in November. And we had a lot of fun with that. But I've never done, I'll be honest with you, I've never done a live painting video before. So if I get distracted, please understand. I probably don't mean it <laughs> entirely. I'm just trying to figure out what to do. Most of the time my paintings are done in multiple sessions. So we'll see how this goes. So, hi, Ray. <laughs> it is exciting, though honestly, I'm kind of nervous right now. <laughs> So right now I am doing a Grisai under, it's not a Grisai, it's a Brunei underpainting because I noticed a problem with some of my, my paintings was that they would all be the same value, they would all be a mid-tone value and that just really leads to a very boring painting. So I, I learned a trick from several YouTube videos, they all use the same trick, is that in watercolor you can also do this in oil painting. You you do an underpainting and it's all in the same color scheme, so very similar to like a black and white, but you can do it in blue, you can do it in green, you can do it in brown, gray, whatever, and you just mark out the values in your painting before you end up painting any colors on top. So I chose to do more brown tones and that will give it a more antique look when I'm done, hopefully. <laughs> oh, Ray. You're just breathing heavily over my shoulder. Great, thank you. I needed that imagery. <laughs> I, yes, that really helps me, Ray. Thank you so much. <laughs> so how's everyone's afternoon, though? You know, it'd be a lot easier instead of breathing heavily over my shoulder, Ray. <laughs> if you if you were just painting along with me, you know, let, let's just paint together. <laughs> that might work better for me. We'll see. <laughs> so right now, let's see, what am I using? I am using raw sienna to bring out some more, more golden highlights on the leaves and stuff. So when I go over it in the green, it's just, it's a lot less work for me. <laughs> I'm all about making things easier on myself. I'm very lazy that way. Maybe I shouldn't be. Yes, Arthur Rackham is amazing. He is one of my painter idols. Are we allowed to have painter idols? <laughs> one of my role models. Oh, <laughs> yes, Ariel, I did have a Bob Ross moment. Yes, we're all painting together in Bob Ross's studio, and he's probably very happy right now that I just said that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna finish up the underpainting to the best of my satisfaction, and then I'm going to show you what I did for, um, I used a different technique for the pen and ink part that I would really like to show you guys because it was a lifesaver for me because I made so many mistakes in drawing the pen and ink part. And I found a new technique that really spared me a lot of grief. Um, I just, Ray, I just used a Micron pen. They, I make sure, I do make sure that it is watercolor fat water fast so that it doesn't leak. I did have one unfortunate painting experience. Actually, it wasn't that unfortunate, but it created a very unique effect on the painting where it bled and it created this really smoky, hazy, green kind of, yeah, very, very much like smoke across the painting. And it actually worked well for what I was trying to do, but I don't think I really want to repeat that there's just a lot of variables that I can't control with that. So I don't use those pens anymore. They were calligraphy pens. So 
not necessarily meant for the rigors of an indecisive painter. <laughs> What pens do you use, Ray? Because I've only used the Micron pens. All right. Oh, you do use Micron. Let's see if I look at mine and they say anything different. Yeah, mine are archival ink, just the normal kind from Hobby Lobby. But I've never, never had any issues with them bleeding. Maybe I, maybe I don't use enough water. <laughs> but we will let that dry for just a little bit and I will show you. So this was, this was the original drawing that I was working on back in November actually for an arts do prompt. It was for the arts do prompt folk tale and I was working on it and realized it's just really flat and my people are funny so let's take that concept and do something different with it. So I ended up using transfer paper. I don't know if you can see that. This is this one was just in pen. I used I used a transfer paper, white transparent paper to draw my background and then I used a light box and just traced it over. So that also means that I didn't have to erase any lines on my paper. Usually I'll do a sketch in pencil and then go over it in pen and ink. And that works really well for a sketchbook, but for a larger piece like this, I do like to try to keep my lines very crisp. And then as you saw in the first sketch, the house that I did was quite flat and didn't have very much dimension. So I drew this house, which is the same as what you see there, only I had to redraw it again a little bit, a little bit larger setting. So here you see this, and again, clear transfer paper. You can put it over the top, and it works really, really well for tracing, for redrawing things. And I ended up drawing. It enabled me to draw Hansel and Gretel several times. And here I decided they're way too big for the house that they're supposed to be going in and redrew some trees, figured out the correct poses, and it was a lot of fun. Okay, Ray wants me to write my handle in a comment. Okay, I will try doing that, Ray. Let's see. Dot. Kindy. I will post that. Let's see, how do I pin it? Pin a comment. <gasps> that is so much fun, Ray. You're a genius. You really are. <laughs> Alright, so that was my process with the pen and ink part. So I had a lot of fun with that. It was the first time I ever really used that technique, and I think I will definitely employ it a lot more. I think I will start mixing up some green. So I'm going to use... A sap green which is for some reason it's a much lighter brighter green if you can see now you can't see that on my pen paintbrush it's a much brighter green and I'm going to mix it with a darker green and then I find that it makes just a much more oh that was the wrong green that was emerald green which has a very bluish tint to it that I don't really like I've never used it well I, I shouldn't say never I have used it in some paintings but not to my liking. So here you can see, if you can see with that angle, it's a very nice warmer dark green. Yes, it is a very lovely rich dark green. So I'll dilute it a little bit with some water before I start going in with some of the darker areas and I'll just gradually build it up. And honestly, my paintings are very much trial and error. With pen and ink, I feel like it's a much more straightforward process. You do the sketch, and if the sketch is good, then you just do pen and ink over it, and it's like it's no problem. Watercolor, it's... I love it, but it is a lot more finicky for me. So, it usually takes me a lot slower and a little bit more focus 
to try to get the correct shading and temperature and all of that fun stuff. So I know there are a number of um, pen and ink artists in the arts too because we kind of ended up beginning because of Inktober for to a great degree if I get that correctly right. <laughs> I'm so glad you're learning so much. I'm learning a lot as I'm doing this, so it's a win-win. <laughs> yeah. But are there any other watercolorists in the art stew who are watching here? Because you know, I've seen I've seen some people I know. Rachel Heffington does some watercolor stuff that is really really fun and cute. I love it. And I know Bert Illustration Ashley does watercolor as well. I'm just wondering if there are any other people that I've missed. Because maybe they would know more about watercolor than I do. <laughs> Be able to say, oh, your technique is terrible, Alyssa. <laughs> I'm sure they would do it very lovingly. Joanna, I have not, what's her handle? I don't know if I'm following her or not. Is that you, Janie? I'm confused now. And honestly, I, I recognize people by their Instagram handles. So for a long time, when Ray's handle was a hatching artist, I would always refer to her with my family as like, oh yeah, the hatching artist lady person. <laughs> okay, sweet little wood art. So, all right, so your name is Joanna. It's nice to meet you. I think I'm really confused, right? <laughs> I'll just keep painting. <laughs> so can everyone tell me what is your greatest struggle in trying to make art? What is your struggle? Like, I'm just speaking technically, not all these lovely philosophical things like actually getting st art started but what is like the one hardest thing is it people is it painting is it lettering like what what is everyone's hardest hardest art challenge Gonna brighten this up a little bit. I'll try adding in some other greens. The one thing I love about watercolor is that you can really build all these layers. You know, people say it's not very forgiving, but I find it's it's pretty flexible. So writing, writing for you is hardest. Yeah, writing is, it's an interesting thing. I've tried doing a little bit of it, you know, like short little anecdote stories kind of stuff. Nothing very spectacular, but we'll see. Maybe I'll branch out and do some more of that in 2018. Uh, for Joanna, it's getting past the design phase. Yeah, that is... Yeah, I have trouble. <laughs> I have trouble with that too. As you saw, I showed you all the multiple sketches that I did. It's quite quite the process of trying to get the correct design and I end up going through multiple multiple sheets of paper. Janie, your writing is amazing. Like I don't see how you struggle. I mean, I'm not denying that you do struggle. I'm sure you do, but the writing that you've produced that I've read is amazing. I can't wait for you to write a book. I really can't. So you have to do that. <laughs> yeah, Ray, writing a book. I, I'm not even thinking about that. I know. Yeah, you posted some little short stories a while back about the girl and she had the mittens and the snowflake on her. That was that was so fun. I really would love to hear more about her story. And yes, tracing paper is amazing. 
I cannot wait to use it more and more, and I probably will overuse it. You know, it's funny, I've had tracing paper for a long time, but I never used it until recently. And now I'm thinking, wow, I'm going to run out of this stuff that I've had for years. <laughs> and yes, Janie will be famous. And I can't wait to see that day and say, yes, we know each other on Instagram. <laughs> Yeah, Ray, are you going to bring your bring your little girl back? I'm sure I'm not the only one who wants to hear more of her story. That's too bad, Ray. Well, I mean, it's not too bad, but it would have, you'll have to come back to her at some point. Because I don't think we'll let you forget about her. <laughs> yeah, but I am so excited for you, Ray, with the stew and how that's taking off. It's so much fun. So much fun to see that. Quite honestly, I was surprised, you know, like halfway through the year and like, wow, all these people are joining. This is so much fun. Yes, tracing paper. Again, back to the tracing paper. It's like my new favorite, favorite thing ever. I, I will nev never be done using it. It's made, it's made my life so much easier, as Joanna can agree. So let's see. I'm going to take some gold ochre. And we'll try to do a little bit on the gingerbread house make it just a little bit brighter but I'm wanting the cupcake wrappers to be a separate brighter color yeah. no Ray I was not the first steward you were the first steward this was your idea and I'm very glad that you asked me to join you because this has been so much fun <laughs> Just take some more of the gold ochre and get it on the warm spots of the trees to make them pop a little bit. And we'll do some in the grass here too. Like I told you, my paintings are pretty experimental and usually it's just building and building little layers at a time. Okay, and I will take some of that emerald green, which is very bluish, bluish green. I never use it straight. I'll mix it with some darker green, but it is handy for bringing out some shadows and trees. So I'll add a little bit and then I'm going to dab it with my paper towel because I don't want it to get too dark or too wet. Oh, thank you, Ray. I'm very, I'm very glad that you asked me to do it with you because honestly, it has been such a fun journey in 2017 and I can't wait to see where everyone will go in 2018. Yeah, the Arts Do is amazing, you guys. I'm sure that all of you will agree with me on that because it is so much fun to, you know, it's just the right size, I think. You know, I'm sure it will get bigger and then we'll figure out a way to keep the community alive, but it is so much fun with this smaller but not too small kind of a group where you can really get 
creativity and inspiration from other people's artwork and see, oh wow, they did this really cool thing for the prompt. And sometimes, sometimes I've seen other people's prompt, uh, artwork for a prompt and like, oh wow, that's a great idea. I wish I had thought of that. <laughs> but that's the kind of thing, it's that friendly nudge in the right direction. It's like, oh yeah, we should try this sometime. I wonder if that's a little bit too dark for now. And I totally just made his hand green. <laughs> Experimenting is a lot of fun, Ray. And it did take me a while to get into an experimental mode. I think Instagram helped me with that in that you know, hey, let's just try this and see if it works. And if it doesn't, oh well. <laughs> it, it made me a little bit less, I don't know, I guess protective of my art. You know, less afraid of failing, I guess. That's the, that's the right way to think about it. Less afraid of failing. Because that's the danger about trying something new is that you're afraid, oh, it's going to be really bad. And sometimes it is. And other times it really, really is just... <laughs> yes, I think you're right, Ray. I think if we are intentional about connecting, it shall remain stewy. It can't be the art stew without being stewy. And I love how it's become our, our own vocabulary adjective. And yeah, you, you've done posts, I think, and you'll say, oh, that's so stewy. And it's like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> So I have a question for everybody. Should I make Hansel and Gretel, should I do him blue and her red, or what colors should they be? Because I feel like, I'm feeling like there's a lot of green here, and then the house will be a little bit more colorful. I'll add colors in the shingles and the cupcake liners. And yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Ooh, I could do purple smoke coming out of the chimney. That'd be really kind of creepy. I wasn't wanting it to be too creepy, but we'll see it we'll see how that goes we will see how that goes Ooh, that is a really interesting color I just took some ultra ultra marine, ultra marine light and mixed that with my darker green and it creates this really turquoisey bluey unique color that I don't think I've mixed those I'm sure I have mixed those two together before yeah, I don't know if I really want to use that. That is very blue. Okay, so red red is one person's vote. Oh, and you like the purple smoke. We will try purple smoke. Yeah, I think I'll try doing some of the sky background first, though, before I start doing too much with the focus characters because in inevitably I will get some blue over places where I don't want it to. So we'll see. We'll just try to go in very lightly. And that is much darker than I would like it to be. So I will go over it with a paper towel and blot it. And the paper towel is nice because you can get a semi-cloud effect with it too. If you just scrunch up the paper towel just right. And let's see, I forget who told me this, but when painting the sky, you really, I'm doing this wrong, but you really want to make sure that, you know, maybe I'm not doing, I'm not doing it wrong, never mind. <laughs> you really want to make sure that this area. By the horizon is lighter than the top area and I've done a couple I did one painting where I didn't follow that rule and it worked out fine but you, it just kind of bothered me for a while knowing that oh I wasn't supposed to do the dark part at the bottom it was supposed to be the other way around <laughs> yeah generally my problem though is making the sky too light so I don't know I'm putting the blue on and I can see it but I don't know if you can see it in the video too much 
It's a very light Pooh Bear kind of sky, I guess, is the best way of describing it. We'll blot that. Okay. And add some on this end. Yes, thank you, Ray. I do like this blue. It is just called blue. <laughs> Yeah, you can't really see my watercolor setup here. I'll bring it over to show you guys. I have this lovely pan of water watercolor set that I got from an Etsy shop. They're, they're based in America, but they're Russian watercolors, so I don't know exactly how that works, but I really like them. They're very nice. All right, so I'm glad, I'm glad you can see the blue. I'll make it just a little bit darker down here. So what are you thinking? Should it be a dark purple smoke so that it's really noticeable or should I make it a more of a light lavender kind of smoke? What would be more eerie? <laughs> Mixing up some more colors. Thinking I'll do more with the trees in a little bit to try to get them darker. And at this point, I'm going to be doing more spotty kind of strokes instead of some more wider strokes on the trees to try to get a little bit of texture in the leaves. Yes, that, that's a good idea. I think I'll start with a lighter purple smoke. And we'll see how that goes. I think I'll warm it up a little bit. I have some purple on my palette here. Oh, yes, that is lovely. Just be very careful. So I'm going to angle my piece to get the right brush stroke. I think that is a little bit darker than what I wanted, so I'm going to blot that. And I totally just got purple all over the painting. <laughs> we'll worry about that later. <laughs> that That is the nice thing about watercolor is that, yeah, I think that works. It's not too dark. <gasps> yes, Ray has, oh, what? <laughs> yes, I will, I'll start with as you can see, I started with the slightly lighter purple, and I might get a little bit dark <laughs> as we go on. We'll see what happens. I don't think I'll be able to finish this whole painting in one, one setting. That rarely, rarely happens for me. So I think in a couple minutes we might have to stop. Try to get more done in the trees, and I'll try to get the first coat layer of paint done on Hansel and Gretel as well. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'll rearrange the paper so that you guys can actually see it. <laughs> so the vote was red. I'm going to do, I'll do a Carmen red. I'm feeling bold today. It's more of a cooler red that I really like for doing. Yeah, honestly, red is my favorite for trying to get really bold. I will get very, very bold with my reds and I'll often do multiple coats when it comes to red. So we'll see how bold I get with here. I'll probably end up blotting off a lot of this that I'm putting on and then go over it with a second coat later. I'm thinking I'll do green stripes on her dress, too. I 
Thank you. I like this red too. I've used it in a number of paintings. Yes, it's called Carmen Red. Or did I say that right? Carmine? C-A-R-M-I-N-E. It's a pretty common color, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. As you can see, I do a lot of blotting and then I'll go over it again in the same color and I'm trying to get a little bit more loose with my paintings, but no, I'm really not. <laughs> uh oh, Ray, if you're sharing my work a lot, then I have to make sure it's good enough. <laughs> I'll tie in some some of the red with this cupcake up here. I'll try that. Thank you, Janie. Yeah, and I do have a lot of candy canes and lollipops here. I'll have to go in, in with those with a smaller brush, I think. I think, yeah. Yeah, that's probably the best, safest bet. Does anyone else really like drawing dresses? I feel like they're so fun to paint because you get all the folds in the fabric and so much fun. Oh, the uses of enchantment. Oh, the point of Hansel and Greta is that the girl saves them both. I did not, that, that is true, I see that. That's interesting, I never really recognized that in this, well I did, yes, Han, bleh, Gretel saves both Hansel and herself. So yeah, I guess it is appropriate to have her in red. That's very fun. Thank you, thank you for sharing that. Let's see, I'm going to pull out a smaller brush. We'll see if this is small enough. I'll just try to do some very quick little details. And obviously I'm going to, I'm a pretty dry watercolor painter. I don't use a lot of water. I prefer to use a very controlled medium. In that sense, I do really admire people who use very loose watercolors. I am not as brave as they are. <laughs> but I think it suits my style. Yeah, what what psychology book of fairy tales was that? Who is the author? Cuz that is that sounds really interesting to me. So you're going to have to post that or something or comment it. <laughs> Because I've never heard about a psychology book on fairy tales. Yes, please, please do look for it, Ray. Because I certainly want to read it now. <laughs> I've been missing out my whole life. I've read so many fairy tales. And then you always hear about another... Okay, Bruno Bettelheim. Let's see, maybe I can... I will pin your comment as well. Yay! That is fun. Actually, I think I'll do that cupcake liner blue. I have this really strange greenish teal blue. I'll try doing that. We'll see how that works. That is a very dark color. I will probably blot that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's more of a kind of green. Let's see, now I'm going to switch back and do a little bit more on the trees. Yes.
the uses of enchantment. I will definitely have to add that to my to be read list book. <laughs> it's already growing very long, but you can never have too many books to read, can you? That's not possible. We'll try to add some more shadows in the grass. What I'm really trying to do with more of my paintings, because backgrounds are kind of hard for me, is I'm really trying to build up different values so you have a lot of um, visual interest in the paintings. So basically my, my artistic goal for 2018 is to create a lot of depth in my paintings. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. But at this point, I think I will stop for now. This has been so much fun chatting with you all and sharing techniques and sharing resources too. I will definitely have to look up that book. And yes, thank you for joining me. This has been so much fun and I'll see you all in the arts too. Happy 2018.